This is a Pod Dealers Network podcast. What is TWS podcast uh, episode whatever? Who cares at this point? The rants of the vindicated. It's my podcast. And I do what I want to. People, listen. Word is it still alive? It's not word for me, Rich. Right, we gonna keep going. I know I changed my voice at work. Bars on the radio. Oh, what is TWS podcast? Well, I'm ready. I feel like staring at my watch and I'm feeling so new school. Suicide attempts, how many tries to take? Damn, 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 First P is past, I am no ass, pasta news, plug one to the whole race, rhyme on a tour, smart and mature, dispatch obscure themes with a mad face, door dog and lean, was once 19, now I'm one year older with reason, clean thoughts and draws, rhyme flow never stores, a yes, 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 y'all's an end this season, the soul reach high planes, could even reach soul train, but Don don't like rap, so that won't happen. Clean thoughts and draws, that's a bar right there, like... They don't, they don't spit like that these days. Anyway, uh, welcome to another episode of the What Is TWS podcast. As always, I'm your boy J. Dot Flam, representing the White Pants Society. And I must start by thanking you first and foremost for taking whatever time out of your day to come chill with me, listen to my rambling, ra- random ramblings. I can speak today. Um, you could be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me, and I do appreciate that. Uh, I know I got another special show going on today, so uh, I might rush through the early proceedings. So uh, I had to start with that one. Because as you can see, this is another Plugs I Met uh, edition. Um, so that, you know, I had to do some daylights and stay the plugs. I thought about doing something else. I was going to do some Beanie Seagull and Rep Philly again because I got another Philly cat on the show. Um, but I feel like if I played some beans with some of the discussions that we've had before, I would be, I'd be stepping on my own point. So I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'm a Styles P over beans person. So I. I couldn't do it. I had it all queued up and ready to go and then changed it at the last minute. So we went, we went with Daylight. I went with the plugs for the plugs I met. Um, let's get into the Chef Elise report real quick. It's a short one. Out of Pepe. Yes, sir, I am. Um, I don't have much to report, but some some sort of sad news, man. Uh, I exchanged a few messages, you know, with my daughter on Facebook Messenger. And um, I don't think she said something to me that just, like, I don't know how to feel about it. Uh she basically told me, she sent me a message saying she loved me. And I sent her one back saying, I love you too, sweet pea. And then uh, she thanked me. She said, oh, you know, it would give me a little awe. Oh. It was very condescending, though. It was like, oh, you know, thanks, Dad. Like, like, I don't know why you being cute type situation or something. And then she went on to tell me that uh, she's no longer my sweet little girl. She didn't say she wasn't my sweet pea, but she said she wasn't my sweet little girl. And I'm like, what? Where the fuck did that come from? Like, what? What happened? I knew it wasn't going to last forever. Like, I knew eventually, you know, she wasn't going to be a sweet little girl. But seven? I mean, I'm just, I wasn't ready. I don't know what it meant. I asked her what it meant, and then the conversation went silent. So, like, this is really weird. Uh, I'm going to see her in a couple of days, so we'll get it all figured out. I'll keep y'all posted, but that's what it is. Still my baby, though. Out of Pepe. Yes, sir, I am. All right, so that's it for the Chef Elise Report. Let's get into what we came here to do today. Again... Um, I'm trying to, you know, shed light on the people around me that have, you know, opened doors for me or helped me expand my network or, or open opportunities for me. And so I got another, you know, such gentleman on the show today. Um, he's the founder of the Pod Dealers Network. Y'all hear the drop in the beginning of the show. Uh, host of several podcasts, Just Say Words, the Saturday series, you know, many more. Uh, Mr. J Got Jokes, the Yola Ratio Debater. I'm going I'm to find out about that in a second. Um, just a good friend of mine, a good friend of the show. I got Jay with me. How's, how's it going, brother? Yeah. What's happening? Oh, man. Not much, not much. How's life for you these days? I was busy as ever. Uh, <laughs> I've been traveling and talking to people about media. Okay. And trying to just be a, a regular person, I guess. <laughs> As opposed to your normal state of, of not regular, like. yeah, yeah, like I, I'm not. I don't have a regular sleep schedule, e schedule. I got you. I got uh, you. I, I just kind of show up and do things. So, so right. yeah, I gotta ask because uh, you know I'm out the loop and I don't. I, I very rarely know what anybody's talking about. What is is it? Am I saying it right? Yola is what is the Yola ratio situation? Uh, is that is can we the, not talk about that? Is we we can. It's a, this is an adult show. Yeah, this is an adult show. So as a as a joke, I th- I saw somebody refer to areolas as just Yola, <laughs> <laughs> and 
head. I was like, wait, wait, what's happening here? I knew this was worth asking about. And, I knew it was. And I think it was in, they were talking about Cardi B's body. Okay. <laughs> and how, like how awesome it is. And I was in agreement. <laughs> so then I saw a woman, this is, you know, just give me some, you know, some leeway to talk about this. Where she started getting upset about like women, women's areola to breast meat ratio. <laughs> <laughs> and I made a comment and we ended up going back and forth. Oh, shit. For like an hour. On the- and so the- I was like, I feel like now I'm in here debating on the behalf of women who have larger areolas. <laughs> and that's how I ended up just added the name. I man, I, I, I appreciate that. I, I didn't know. Like is did y'all come to a consensus? Is there a golden ratio for uh Yolas or Yolas? Um no, no, I don't think that lady. Yeah, she just kind of bowed out of the conversation. <laughs> so it's no, it's no so like, was like, no like pie. Man. This time's the half the diameter. Yeah, no, or something was, like that. I, I think her thing was if they are, if they are too small, it you, it's like cartoon titties or something. Only I see only <laughs> only like, only a woman like would give a fuck. Like I don't think there's any dude that's like oh nah, them areolas is off. What the fuck is going on over there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've def- I've definitely seen men be like, "Oh, they're too big," but I'm always like, "Hey, what, smoke them if you got them." <laughs> I, I think dudes would, if they do say they're too big, it is not. It's not a red light. Like it's not a stop sign. Like it's nothing that's going to prevent no. anything from going forward. Yeah. It's just a comment for the sake of comment. All right, I, I had to ask because yeah. I, I had no idea. <laughs> I see, you know, you change up the uh, the screen name often, and every once in a while, I see one. I'm like, man, what the fuck does that mean? I'll, can I ask? <laughs> so I had the opportunity. Yeah. I, I had to ask. All right, man. So I want to get into want to get into the positive stuff. Well, we're gonna do some ratchet things toward the end, but uh, you know, so. got to start with uh, what I brought you out here for. Um, like I said, man, you know, I'm reading it. You know, Nipsey's uh, the the story of Nipsey's life, the book they did, uh, the marathon don't stop. And, um, and, you know, it just, again, I like guess it's, it's just impressing on me, like, you know, how dope an individual this was, you know, regardless of the music or whatever, how, you know, whether you're a fan or not of the music, um, he just seemed to be a great dude and what he was trying to do for his community, you know, through the proceeds from the rap music and everything, um, you know, was amazing to me. And so, you know, I, I feel like I've been blessed to be around some people who I see, you know, making strides to try to, you know, help people out on a small scale, on a large scale, whatever it is, but just doing things they necessarily have to do um, in support of other people. And that just seems to be their their modus operandi. I, you know, that's how they get down. That's, that's what they do. And you were one of them, uh, those people to me. Um, one of the things, you know, you've been championing, you know, because you, you sell the merch, you got the uh, Tell Someone You Love Them t-shirt. And I think mm-hmm. that that's, that's like super dope because uh, you never know who just... Who just needs to hear that, you know, who just needs right. that that moment, you know, to know that somebody out there cares or loves them. Um, where did the inspiration, you know, for that come and it come from? And, you know, and, and why do you feel it's important to, like, push that message? Uh, I hope I, while I hope he does listen to this podcast, <laughs> I hope he does not uh, <laughs> seek any financial backing. <laughs> I actually heard that from a fabulous song. OK, OK. So it was, I think the line was like, why a nigga got to go to jail t- for you to tell him that you love him? Gotcha. Um, and then I had kind of thought about that because I had ran across a lot of people who had lost loved ones or lost siblings or something like that. And, and a lot of the stuff that they said was like, I never got to have that final conversation. I never got to say I love you. Even especially when it was between men, like a, my homie lost his brother. And they didn't really do the I love you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they just was like, yo, I see you. I see you. And then, and it was kind of that. So, um, when kind of like uh, on the same thing that you're on, I want to spread positivity, but I also want people to be able to say like, in a, even in a non-romantic way, like, like, I love you. I care about you. I, I see you. You're valid. Right. Um, and so we, I'm, Mess around with some designs and just started saying it. First, I started saying it. Just, hey, tell somebody you love them. Tell somebody you love them. At first, it started being sarcastic when I first 
started wearing the merch. Like, uh, I'm always like the guinea pig for anything that I do. Right. So, so I go get this big T-shirt. I'm walking around the store and like just old white dudes are walking up to me. and like, I love your brother. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, all right, fam, just get off, get off me. Yeah, but then it yourself. started trickling down and like women would be like, I love you. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't even know this lady, but it's fine. Um, and so then people started asking where could could they get it, and that was kind of like the thing about like we're gonna kick the store off. Gotcha, gotcha. Where where can people get the shirt? Just so we get. Uh, I'll put out. the link in my bio on Twitter, and I'll I'll share it with you so you can put it in show notes. Yep. But it's on Teespring, uh, at the Words Pod Store. It's still going strong. It's it's one of our top sellers. I've seen a tell someone what you love a shirt in almost every situation now. Somebody is wearing his gym clothes, sleepwear. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's not what I intended it for, but hey, I love seeing it. So yeah, that's that's yeah, what's so up. I get super excited. I mean, I'm definitely I what I heard from all of that was if you want random women to walk up on you and tell you that you tell them tell you that they love you, cop one of the shirts. Yeah. So that that might be my motivation sure. behind it. I, I gotta get me one now. Uh in all fairness, before you say that, I've been stopped more wearing your merch than wearing my own merch. <laughs> That's what's up. And I appreciate the support, man. I, I appreciate the support. Uh, yeah, I, I try to make like conversation starter stuff, like stuff that you got to you gotta read. People got to lean in and look at your shirt or they got to decipher. And they, they might have to mm-hmm. ask you a question about it because it don't immediately make sense. Uh, I just, you know, I, I try to do some other things, but we I'm trying to get like you. I need the merch store to pop off. I need to. I've been trying to tell people to buy some shirts so I could take Chef Elise to Disneyland or something. That's not working. So uh, I got to mm-hmm. come up with another, with another, another hook. To try to pull people in. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely. I saw that shirt and I was like, damn. I wish I had come up with that idea. Um, but I just think it's a dope concept. And then you like yeah, to spread that on a shirt and just have that message. You know, walking down the street. Uh, I think it's something that we need these days. Uh, but say, but similar to that, you know, in that vein, like you just seem to be the kind of person that is like looking out for people and even people, you know, that you don't know, um, you know, looking to make sure that folks are all right and things like that. You know, you you reached out to me early on. You know, you gave me a, an opportunity to be a part of your network when I really didn't think anybody was listening to the show. Um, I did my first guest spot on one of your shows, which uh, I thought was really dope. Mm-hmm. Gave me the chance to talk about uh, alcoholism and my struggles and everything everything with that. Um, and then even when, like when I was on your network and, uh, you know, we, we're in, I mean, you on somebody's podcast network, that's a, that's a business partnership, you know? So we're, we're in mm-hmm. a business partnership and I just like disappeared. I just dropped off the face of the earth. And, um, and through that whole period of mine, through like, you know, the self-destruction and the recovery, you still roll with me. And when you would reach out to me, like not on some, like, what's up with the show while having a, episode drop but more like i see an episode has a drop are you okay what's going on with you type thing Mm -hmm. Um, and you know and i've been with all of the people that i have on this show right now um you know the the thing for me is that especially in situations like that it'd been real easy for you to just like disconnect like you wouldn't even had to maliciously be like okay i don't i don't fuck with you no more you just had to let me continue to disappear like and you would have had to do nothing, mm. and a you know relationship would have dissolved. But that's not what you chose to do. So I want to I want to ask you like, where did that mentality come from? Like you know, recognizing that you you, you maybe see something maybe wrong with a person, and a person you don't know or have any obligation to, but you decide to take that step to see if you can help in some kind of way. So I think it comes from a lot of like observation and genuinely liking y'all as as people i think a lot of times when i watch people create networks they go these shows get a lot of clicks they get a lot of engagement if we match them together with the right marketing we all can get a large lump sum of money and we can bust it down that was never my intention for pod deal uh so with pod dealers i I had been around like listening to you guys. Everybody that's on the network, I I engage with. I I know a little bit about them personally that they're not sharing on on the internet or 
we're having personal conversation. I think the conversation with you and I was we were like in similar places. Um, I I was a little bit disconnected. I was my life was f- fairly chaotic, <laughs> um, and so I, I was just like I, I saw a lot of me and even in your situation. So I was kind of like, hey, um, is everything okay? Because it's not about the show. I I'll never reach out to y'all about the show. I'll check in on y'all in the way of being like, hey, uh, it hasn't dropped in a while. There has to be a reason. Right. And, and not in the way of like the show needs to be up in the way of like what or what are you going through personally? Do you want to talk about it? Because I think that's the thing too, especially for us creators, we spend a lot of time talking or thinking about talking <laughs> it, where we're like, oh, I haven't really addressed anything. I really want to uh, talk about this to set this up for a joke, set this up for a punchline, set this up for conversation with other people. But the conversations aren't necessarily deep, right? We're just, we're reporting on what we see. Yeah. Um, and so the relationship between you and I is really important to me because one, we are now genuinely friends. And also in the way of being like, at that time you were, you were having like, a, a mental health issue, a health, health, your genuine health. Yeah, all of. <laughs> and so I'm like, yo, what's what's up, my guy? Like, I'm really big on community in that way. Um, and so I try to do everything I possibly can to kind of like keep my community intact. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, I, and I see that, and I, I appreciate it. And it's not like I feel the need to to do this series. Because I, I don't necessarily think it's, you know, it's commonplace. I found a lot of it in this podcast community where, you know, people just seem mm-hmm. to be um, genuinely. I mean, even even if it's not like personal connections, it's a we can all win together type situation or, you know, uh, a mentality. I've heard recently from, you know, some other podcasters that that's not the case everywhere you go. So I guess I've been lucky. But um, that's true. <laughs> but. You know, I've gotten a lot of that and, uh, and you know, and definitely, and that was one of my first experiences with it. We're just like, you know what I'm saying? Like you were a dude, we had never met. We we didn't really know each other. Um, um, you know, I didn't know anything about you other than your podcast, which I liked. And then you reached out and, you know, you had me on the show. And then, you know, when I was going through my stuff, you know, it would just be like, hey man, everything good. And it was never like, I put you on my network, man. What the fuck is going on with your podcast? Yeah, you know, never. it was never anything like that. It was just like, you good? Everything all right? Like I, you know, I, I see you've disappeared. Like you're not posting none of that stuff. Like, you know, what's what's up? What can I do? And uh, and even mm-hmm. through like some of the crazy responses you got back from me, like you just you just roll with it. And uh, I just it, I feel like it's rare. Do you think anything in your your upbringing has something to do with that? So I also come from a long line of addicts, and. Uh, and it's a mixture of like mine and my business. Gotcha. Right? Like you'll share what you feel comfortable sharing. I'm never going to pry. But I genuinely want to make sure that you're okay. Because if it's something like you're in crisis, I'm like, hey, man, this is somebody else I can call. Maybe you don't want to talk to me, but what? who can I get you in contact with that you will talk to? Yeah. Um, also, like dealing with people in my family – who are addicts or suffer from addiction. It was always this like kind of waiting for them to kind of like, it's like a peaks and valley situation thing. So it was kind of like, Oh, you know, we're there. Everything's fine to, Oh, everything's chaos. And I think that has kind of always helped me navigate with a lot of relationships. We're just being like, I don't, take any of that stuff too personally. I mean, yeah, it'll, it affects me for sure. But I'm definitely like, we could talk every day and then not speak to each other for six months. And then I, the day you text me or the day I text you and you reply, we just pick up where we left off at. I'm not in that, like blaming you for whatever you had going on in that, in that gap. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the way it was. I, 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 I think we talked about this a while ago, but that's kind of the way it was with me and my father, right? Yeah. So my pops dealt with addiction and 
I kind of lost contact with him when I was like eight, eight or nine. And then like, again, we started talking again when I was like a teenager, <laughs> but he was almost like at the peak then. Okay. So it was never like, I would ask him a genuine question like, yo, how you doing? How's your day? And it would, it would be some weird <laughs> response. He'd just be like, I remember one time I was like, Dad, how you doing? I haven't, I haven't talked to you in a minute. He's like, never get a joint bank account with a woman. <laughs> and I was like, um, all right. He was like, they're going to they gonna work you over every time. Don't ever do it, son. And I was like, so, so how's work? <laughs> <laughs> so he, and then we did talk again to later and I think like again in my 20s and then again in my 30s and the last time I had talked to him we caught up on everything like yeah. it was like we didn't miss a beat and it, and so we you know we're kind of talking and then that was genuinely the last time I saw him before he passed right say so, I mean it goes back to the you know tell someone you love him like you know with that that every conversation if you leave it the way if you leave every conversation with, you know, if this was our last conversation, I'd be okay with that. You know, mm -hmm. um, you don't have to live with, with some of those regret, regrets. Uh, but yeah, but two things. One, I'm glad I, I wasn't the first person to just like give you crazy off the wall responses to generic questions. Because I remember you texting me like, hey, man, everything OK? And I'm like, yeah, man, everything's cool. I just got to check into this mental health facility real quick. You know, I hit you back when I, when I get out. Everything will be fine. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, real just, like, flippant about it. Like, yeah, I'm just, you know, they about to lock me up real quick. But don't worry about it, man. You know, I'll be good. You know, a couple of days, yeah. I'll be right back out. Everything is fine. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back. We'll talk about it afterward. It's cool, man. Uh, so, yeah, I'm glad that, like, that wasn't a shock to the system because you you obviously been through it with other people. And then, like, to mm -hmm. hear you, you know, uh, mention the stuff about having, you know, um, addicts in your family or dealing with people, you know, suffering from addiction. I think people don't get that, that, like, um, they did an experiment once where, I think they put like a rat in a cage and it was like two water bottles. One was just water and the other one was like laced with cocaine. And uh, mm -hmm. if he was in the cage by himself with nothing else to do, they OD like every time. Like they went straight to the cocaine water and just used it till they couldn't use it no more. Like they could put the same rat in it or the same, you know, species of rat or whatever in a situation with the two water bottles, but put... Uh, activities, you know, put the exercise wheel, put other rats, put a mm -hmm. maze and stuff like that. And in those situations, they tried the cocaine water and they was like, yeah, I'm cool on that. And it just, you know, so, and they and went, went on their, their, their merry way, like live their life. Like the thing that most addicts are missing, especially at the height of their addiction, because you really isolate at that point. Like they miss mm -hmm. community. They miss connection with other people. And, uh, the, like the one thing you could probably do to help an addict more than anything is just like show that like your connection mm -hmm. is unconditional. Like I'm not, I might not be able to associate with you on a daily basis because of what you're doing. And I might not be able to rock with you on everything that you're doing. You can't do it around me, but I'm always, you know, be connected. I'm going to check on you. I'm going to see what's up. You know that somebody out here cares about you. You're not a hundred percent alone, you know, but like just not removing that connection. So again, man, I, I appreciate you for that because uh, you know, coming from friends and family is like one thing, but then like coming from a person that don't really know you and don't have no reason to care about you other than like you just, you're a human being like that, uh, mm -hmm. that it hits different. So I hope people, yeah, absolutely. I hope people hear that part of the message. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you to get back to like podcasts and, and the business side, um, cause I do want to kind of like try to share some light on, on what the, the benefits to, to operating in a business space with this kind of mentality of like looking out for people um, even when you don't necessarily have to, or uh, even when it may be of some, you know, perceived detriment to you. Well, when you were here in Austin, we got a chance to talk. You talked about um, people or companies approaching you for deals for the podcast, mm -hmm. uh, but you turning them down or not wanting to accept them because they didn't, they didn't want to include the entire uh, group of shows that you wanted. You wanted something that worked for all of us. And not just you or mm -hmm. a, a one individual. Um, for you, what's the what's the mindset behind that that thought process, and what's the what's the benefit that you see in operating that way when it comes to you know this this industry? So it's kind of multifaceted in that way. Like for me, I'm not a person that seeks to be the leader, right? 
but I also am the person who's like, you ever went with the, to the club with your homeboy and they they tripping on one of y'all in the group, <laughs> and it's always that one person who'll be like, if he can't get in, ain't none of us going in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's kind of like how I work. So uh, if a company comes to me and they're like, hey, we want to give you a product or we want to give you some cash or, you know, some discount codes for X amount of time for Just Say Words or Saturday Series or anything. I go, okay, cool. That's dope. I appreciate it. Can we get multiple discount codes? Can we get multiple products? Because as Just Say Words and Saturday Series are not as active as they should be, there's the Black Eye Wrestling Show, what is TWS, Zoview, like people who could also use these products who are way more active and are constantly growing their audience. And they come back and they either ask for metrics or they ghost. And so for me, I have a marketing background. So I can help pretty much any show, any podcaster do the thing that they need to do, right? Right. Reach this audience that they need to. But for me, if we all can't get in, it's not worth it. It doesn't it doesn't matter how many commercial breaks or how many things that I have on my show cuz it feels like I don't need that. You know, when when we all were on Influencer Bridge, I think that was something. They would send people my way, right? So they'd be like, do a commercial for Quip and we'll give you a toothbrush. Do a commercial for, I forgot, uh, it was like Gaston, Gaston Luga and we'll send you a backpack. Um, do something for Warby Parker and we'll give you a discount code for glasses. And I was like, that's cool. Uh, but... You know, I maybe get like a thousand downloads in a month. What is that? Is it really moving the metrics? I I know I'm not the only podcast doing that. But if I could show up with four or five podcasts with the same one or a different discount code, then we could show up with a lump of metrics and and really do something. Yeah. And most companies don't necessarily want to do that unless you have you hit a certain number, you hit a certain metric or whatever. But really doing doing something as a grassroots company is to me more impactful yeah so yeah it's easy to be like well let's partner with barstool or let's let's partner with whoever else right the ringer uh and and give them a whole bunch of money and and they know how much their thing is worth they know how much they're reaching i've never really been into metrics in as an individual show mainly because it you always end up impacting people that you didn't think. So even if you're trying to tar- you trying to create a target audience, it doesn't necessarily hit like it should. Yeah, I think like we had this joke a, uh, a while ago where I was like, for some reason, I get a, a ton of downloads in the Philippines. <laughs> and the, the running joke was like, what if I'm super famous over there and I've never been? <laughs> right, like I right. go over there and like <laughs> every Sunday turn into just say words, right? <laughs> I'm like, yo, does Quip, uh, you know, translate to what they need or or things like that? So it, it's it's a huge trade off. I think also when it comes to this uh, networking and me working with y'all individually, the thing that I really like is you guys know your worth. You know what your audience likes. You know what you like, and you wouldn't sell something to an audience that doesn't need it, right? Yeah, yeah. So if it's not a show where y'all like, need to talk about, like, y'all were sponsored by Blue Chew, you know, <laughs> then what's the, <laughs> what's, the, what's the real purpose, right? Like, yeah. it's not your target demographic and things like that. So um, I think with doing business, doing business with good people and, and doing business for good people uh, is ideal in this space. I know we all out here chasing the bag. I'm not going to, I'm not, Knocking y'all for chasing the bag. I've seen the price of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do what you got to do. <laughs> but um, sometimes I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's it's just not worth it. It's, uh, I don't have to. I don't have to do that. I mean, I, I, I saw that tweet earlier. Uh, you know, was why you late? Why you rent late or something like that? Like I bought two dozen eggs, bro. Have you seen the price of eggs? 
Yeah, that's really my new <laughs> my new response. Yeah, the lady was like, "You missed your payment. You missed your, your payment for I forgot what it was for." And I was like, "Uh, yeah, that's fine." I was like, "I have the payment. I, I have the payment soon." And then she was like, "Well, why were you late?" <laughs> and I was like, "I bought two dozen eggs." <laughs> she was like, "What?" Yeah, I was like, "I bought two dozen eggs." Have you seen the price of it? <laughs> have you seen the price of eggs? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, I'm not. I, I I appreciate that, man. Like, I'm I'm trying to get to that place where I really understand um, marketing and and the worth of the show, or what my audience is. I know I def I left Spreaker because I was doing the monetization through them, but every time I would go you know, listen to my show, like they didn't really give you a whole lot of um, control over the ads that they they put in. And so I go listen to my mm-hmm. show, and it'd be like something for a gun lobbyist or something, or it'd be something like. Republican senators, political ad or something like that. And I was like, all mm-hmm. right, you know, the little bit that they paying me to put these ads in the show is not worth my show being associated with any or any anybody who listens to my show thinking that, you know, this is what I'm pushing or this is what I want. So uh, mm-hmm. we, we can move on, move on to something else. But all right, that's enough kumbaya, cool, you know, good business, stuff like that. You know, I know you a legendary shit talker. So uh, I got to. I got a couple of things I wanted to, to run past you to to, to get your, your opinion on. So um, the first in this series that I did, the plugs I met, was uh, my homie Raw Assassin uh, from the All on the Table podcast. He's from Philly, and I've been on his show several times. Uh, he said something. I think the first time he said it was during the, the whole Marathon live stream. And uh, mm-hmm. it caught me off guard. I found it like truly disgusting. Um, but I didn't make the Philly connection to it until like today. And and we talked about it when he was on the show and I just thought it was him being gross. I didn't understand that it could possibly be a Philly thing, but now I see it. So uh, his thing is he puts cream cheese in his grits. So I got to ask you, is that, is that, a, is that something you've heard about? Is that a Philly no. thing? You about that life? Like I didn't, the Philly cream I, cheese thing did not, like it no, didn't click I've immediately. Never done this. We may be, we might be a different age, a, a group, uh, but no, I've never done that. Never done that. I don't even, yeah. Have you heard of <laughs> it? Anybody yeah. you know around you that's like cream cheese and the grits? We are, we are a butter, salt, and pepper family. Thank you. All right. So you have no sugar. <laughs> we have not, no. No. If, if you are eating sugar in your grits, I want you to prepare yourself. <laughs> To get ready to take insulin. <laughs> what you did? I want you to squeeze your stomach fat. Get ready. <laughs> Practice because it's coming. Now, my man said he puts cream cheese and cheddar and so. I mean, it was it was just a lie. I was just like, I don't I don't understand how your system is handling all of that in uh, nah. some grits. I definitely don't agree with the sugar thing. My my ex wife did it, and we you know I'm from the D.C. Maryland area. She's definitely mm-hmm. from Maryland, but. Uh, Parts that I don't necessarily recognize as part of the DMV sometimes, but you know, so we're mm-hmm. not that we're not that from that far apart. But she does the sugar thing, and now that we divorced, you know, and she's the custodial parent. Like my one of my biggest fears with my daughter, like as superficial oh, as it may yeah. sound, is that she's gonna grow up putting sugar in her grip. No, that's real. That's a real fear. <laughs> that's a, that's a real fear. It's not cool. It's, you it's, need to have the sit down like after school special. We do. I, I, the problem is I can't for whatever reason. Texas is more Western. Than it is south. I thought I was in the south for sure. Yeah, I no. thought I was in the south, and like, I can't find grits here. I can't. I can't get normal fried chicken. Everybody got to put honey, chipotle, something on them. Like, just fry salt, pepper, <laughs> yeah, flour, yeah. chicken. Just that's yeah. all you got to put on yeah. the fucking chicken. But they go too far with you. So I can't even find like grits other than the instant grits. And I'm enough of a southerner that that's like I don't. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Uh, so I haven't been able to give Chef Elise, we haven't been able to do our cooking stuff and make some grits so she can understand the mm. appropriate, yeah. you know, additions. But yeah. cream cheese, I just... Attention to detail. I didn't know, man. I was like, today it was just like, oh shit, Philly cream cheese. Maybe it's a Philly thing. I know who I'm going to ask. No. Nah. I have not, I've not heard of this. <laughs> hey, can you give me a, a weird, I won't say weird, but a different and exclusive Philly food thing is there something exclusive to philly it's like real fully food people know about it um 
all the poppy stores have better cheesesteaks <laughs> than all the popular cheesesteak places. I, 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 um, I skipped I on the cheesesteak places when I went, but I do want to go. I want one of those. Uh, was the roast pork sandwich with the broccoli rob or something oh, like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I want to do that. That's that's a big thing. Is that is that right up there with the cheesesteak in Philly, or is it more important? Um, so the sandwich is. I don't want to say it's fairly new. We, we've always done that. I think pork roll in general is a is a big deal. Oh. Uh, but the thing about pork roll, I don't I don't think I've ever met a, a black person who's been hype about a pork roll. <laughs> but like, if you get you a good white homie from Philly. They go, that's where they go. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's a it's an older lady that works at the supermarket by my house, and she, and she's from Philly, and she saw me buy Scrapple, and she was like, "What you know about that?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, I, I know about this. I like, I'm about to." Do this. And so she was like, she started rambling off all this stuff she was making. I'm making pork roll, blah 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 blah. And then like she was like, "You should come back tomorrow. I'm gonna bring you some." This is how I know that I, my whole life I was meant to be a fat person. Because <laughs> I went back to the store and accepted food from a stranger. <laughs> yep. I just was like, yep, I'm going to just go back and get this Philly pork roll from this old white lady. Did you did you, yeah. did you you rock the uh, tell someone you love them shirt so you could put her in the right? Like, you wouldn't do this with a, to a person. They got to tell someone you love them shirt on. You wouldn't poison me. Nah, I you? think I had, like, my laugh, listen, learn shirt on or something. That's close enough. <laughs> like, and she was just like, here you go. And I was like, damn. I took it and and it was good. Yeah, and like, I literally was like, <laughs> she could have just poisoned this and you just took it. I tell you the moment I knew that like uh Austin had affected me, that like I had I had got sucked into the hippie culture, is that um I was at mm. a I went to for South by I went to a free show. I think the Roots were playing, or maybe not mm. the Roots playing, but Quest Love was DJing. I think uh Dayla was there, um Erica Badu was there. It was a dope show. And I seen like an actual drum circle, like some hippies doing all, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, man, they real. Um, and then at some point, it was two people going through the crowd. It was one girl who was like, I'm not leaving until I get a hug from everybody. And she went through the crowd. And like I hugged her. And my um, my wife, I think well, she she might not have been my wife at the time. I think we made, we we hadn't made that decision. But she looked at me and she was like, do you know her? And I'm like, no. I'm like, I'm just... Caught up in the moment. And then some dude was just rolling through with like a pipe. And he's like, you smoke? And he just handed it to me. And everything East Coast in me should have said, you don't smoke yeah. a random pipe from a nigga you don't know. And, but I was just caught up in the in the Austin just caught up in the happiness. <laughs> and I had to do it. And I, you know, probably the last time I ever smoked. So that leads me into my next question for you. Uh, I'm sober now. I've been, God willing, February 15th. Will be four years for me. Um, so That's at this dope. point, I don't do anything mind altering. I don't drink non alcoholic beer because it usually got like point zero zero five percent or something, man. Because I mm. I just I know me, and a little bit if a, mm. if I like a little bit, then I want all of it. Mm. I got like five hundred dollars worth of tea downstairs because I just decided I wanted to be a tea drinker one day, and then now I done od on on fucking tea. Like that's just what I do. <laughs> So I don't do anything, but I, I got to admit, like, um, I think some people think sober people look down on folks that indulge. And I think it's the opposite. Like, I'm jealous. I wish I could moderate. I wish I could moderate anything. Mm. You know, I wish I could try. So I don't see the harm in a lot of this stuff. I just know that if I do it, I'm going to go overboard. So when I see people, you know, enjoying themselves, it's like, damn, that would have been cool. And sometimes I, I think, like, I wish I had waited to get sober, like i have done it like an extra year or two, you know, where I could have tried a few mm-hmm. more of these things, scratched them off the list, and then uh, and then called it quits. I'm good. I'm not going there, but I live vicariously through, like, your Twitter page. Like, I watch I watch you on Twitter. I see, like, some of the products and uh, some of the stuff you talk about, and I'm like, man, shit, shit looks fun. So, for me, can you share, like, uh, an exceptional weed moment or like, a, or like a product or something so I could pretend that I can relate to it real quick. Ooh. Like a favorite right. high. Favorite high. My f- oh, that's tough. Okay. <laughs> so there's two moments for me. So I haven't been smoking weed long. I think I think I started smoking weed like once COVID hit. No, bro. Um, 
And so I kind of didn't know what to do. I didn't, again, like I said, I grew up with addicts. So I didn't even really, like, I wasn't in the smoke of cigarettes, black and miles, none of that. But I also, go, through going through therapy, it was like almost to the point where they were like, yo, we're going to start giving you medication. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. We got to figure <laughs> something out. So so a lot of self-soothing, a lots of conversation. And then somebody was like, just just start smoking weed. You'll be okay. Uh, and so I had no material. I got the like literally just flour <laughs> from the dude. I got nothing. I don't know how I would do. And so somebody was like, hey, uh, I remember you have a hookah thing at your house. And I was like, I was like, I, I do have a hookah thing at my house. Oh, I, I uh, done and that. they're like, yeah. And they're like, yo, you can grind up the flour, mix it with the shisha and just smoke it. And I was like, for real? <laughs> uh, and I remember like lighting up the hookah, going outside. Now, here's the thing. Also being new to weed, I'm smoking the hookah the way you smoke hookah. Like you're <laughs> taking these super long pools. Right, right. Not thinking, oh, snap, it's weed in here. I remember having a really deep discussion about what they're doing on Mars. <laughs> They gonna bring slavery back up here. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> so like, uh, and I was like, I don't know how high I am. I feel like whatever, but uh, that was probably like the my first time being super high. The next time, it wasn't a bad trip, but it was memorable. So I saw this clip for. This place in Nashville, I think it's called Bud and Brew. Okay. And it's like a brewery, but they also you can also smoke in there. And they had this device called a, a Zenco vaporizer. Uh, and essentially what it does is it just turns, you know, cards, flour, dab into vapors that you can sip like out of a cup. Okay. I think I've seen YouTubes of that. Right. So I was like, oh, this is super, super interesting, right? Uh, I get it right before Christmas, so this was like, oh, you bought one? Yeah, so I okay. bought it. I okay. was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out where to get from from because that Bud and Brew clip on Instagram went viral and they was, they were sold out. Oh, okay. And so I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm gonna go on back order. And I I had looked recently, like right after Thanksgiving, probably, and they were like, oh, they're back in stock. So I ordered a kit. It gets here like two, three days later, and I let it sit for like a week because uh, everybody was like, "You should get, you should get some dab and put it in there." And I was like, "I was like, um, okay, all right, all right I'll, I'll wait." So I end up getting some dab, and it doesn't give you the instructions <laughs> <laughs> on how much to put in here, right? <laughs> so me, set up. I'm like, fill it up. <laughs> So I'm like, all right. So I fill it up, and then everybody saw it, and they were like, "You should, should probably take a little bit out of there. <laughs> Looks like it's too much." So I take the scoops out, take like two, two, three scoops out, and turn it on, and it is the thickest white smoke I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. So I sip a couple times, pass it, sit. Pass it, set it back up, sip a couple more times, blow the smoke out. I'm like, oh, this is nice. Let, go back for the third time. While I'm raising the glass to my head, it feels like my head is turning into a balloon full of helium. <laughs> and I was like, this, this. But I'm trying to play it, which I don't understand why I do. We're all getting high. I don't understand why I'm trying to still be tough. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a puff it again. Do what I put it back down. Stand up, my legs don't work. No shit. <laughs> Not in the way like I fell down. They just don't bend and move forward. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so I'm like just standing, leaning on the table. Everybody like, you okay? I'm like, no. I'm not all right. <laughs> I I'm my body is gone. You, yeah. This is this is a I am an autopilot. 
So I'm up for like another two, three hours. I'm like, I'm getting in bed. As you do, as you get older, you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Each time I wake up to go to the bathroom, I am higher than I was the previous <laughs> time. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, <laughs> try, try, try to go to the bathroom, <laughs> try to hold it together. I was high until the next evening. I remember sitting outside l- looking at the like birds flying around and just being like, I would like to come down. <laughs> if, if you if you can find it in your heart to let me come down, I would greatly appreciate it. There are things I want to do and I can't get anything done. Oh, man. I know this is self-inflicted. I'm having a fantastic time. I'm grateful to be here. I would like to get off of the ride now. <laughs> My bad. I take full responsibility yeah. for what happened. Yeah, no, right. This is all me. <laughs> I I apologize to me, but if anybody out there in the universe, any like, like the universe, could just let me come down, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys. Just yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. So I've done the I did the hookah thing. Uh, mine was way more ratchet. Like uh, I think I was dating a girl who smoked at the time. She would like come over to the house and smoke, and I think um, she was gone because I never like I probably would have been more into weed, but I don't like. Alcohol was something you didn't have to know somebody to get. Like you look at stores everywhere. Right. I never knew anybody who sold weed or knew how to reach out to them or whatever like that. I never asked or inquired, mm-hmm. but the information wasn't readily available. So I didn't know how to get it. But when she would leave, mm-hmm. I'd like find her roaches or whatever. And I just like sprinkle whatever was in the roach in my hookah and then go outside mm-hmm. and do that. And yeah, the same thing I remember watching, I think I was watching South Park and just like, it just got so deep to me. And I was just like calling people like, this is a commentary on the struggle of black people in America. Like I just, I had all <laughs> these ideas about the subtext to this South Park episode, the greatest, I can't even remember what episode right. it was, but it was the greatest fucking episode of all time. Um, yeah, I've never done the, the I've seen those things. And, it, and this is how I know I'm an addict and you're not. Because one, I love gadgets. And two, Same. I love getting high. And if I bought, a gadget to facilitate me getting high. I don't care if I didn't have the appropriate item to use it in the optimum way when I first got it. It's not arriving at the house and not being used within the first 15 minutes that it gets mm. there. There's no way I'm sitting on that for a week. Like, it's just not possible. I would have drove myself crazy. I had well, see, that it. was the thing. Uh, I watched all these YouTube videos and they had said, I have plenty of flour. Yeah. And they were like, "Oh, it's not the best for flour." And See, I, I, don't, like, I don't care oh, if it's not the best. Will it will it work with the flour? Will, will I get something out of it? Will something happen? We don't. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, it, that's literally what I thought about. It. But I am also like you, so like I love gadgets in general. They could have just been like, "Yo, this doesn't do anything weed. It just also makes everything vaporous. You could put like <laughs> water in here, I'm, yeah, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, uh, and I was super excited about it, but. I also, there's that thing of like, every gadget person has this thing, is the money and the timing to buy the peripheral pieces to your main gadget. Yeah. And so that was kind of the piece where I was just like, all right, well, I'll get all the peripheral stuff later. And so like, that's how, when the dab got here, but no, when the dab got here, it was like, it was a Christmas kickoff. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, let's go. So we're like, yeah, yeah, we're in here. (laughs) Turn it up. Yeah, I, I have definitely like postponed a gadget purchase because I wasn't going to be able to have everything at the same time to be able to use 100%. it. And I was going to drive myself crazy if it was in the house and I couldn't do what I wanted to do mm. with it. Right. But man, now I appreciate you you sharing that with me because I definitely, and again, I'm sitting here listening to you tell the story about your legs not working and, uh, and, and getting higher throughout the night and getting to the point where you like asking the universe if they could allow you to come down. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> like, like, that, that, yeah. <laughs> that shit sound kind of fun. But now I'm in, I'm in no, it, yo, I got It's them. hilarious. <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's, I'm I'm good. Like I I tell people like uh like I don't I don't realistically believe like if I had one more drink or if I did something, like it would take me all the way down that path. Like, you know, there's mm-hmm. there's probably a chance. And it's just like 
you know, there's nothing about those things that's attractive enough to make me risk it. Like, I really don't think it would happen, mm-hmm. but like, why risk it? I'm never, I'm never going back there again. So, uh, so yeah, you don't have to worry about like, I like hearing other people's story. I like being a sober person at the party and just watching other people be drunk. That shit is hilarious yeah. to me. I love that. Yeah. You know, so, uh, so yeah, if, if anybody listening, if you're around me and you indulge in whatever you indulge in, please do it. It, it make my day. Don't, you don't have to worry about me wanting to try none or trying to sneak something. I'm not. I'm, I'm terrified to do it, but I'm going to enjoy the fuck out of watching you go through whatever it is that you go through. Shit is, is amazing to me. And I might be a little jealous, but I'm a, I'm a chill. I'm good. That's how I feel about drinking. Yeah. Like, I enjoy one, two make drinks max. Because I I know two things. A lot of times when I'm offered a drink or people offer me to go out drinking, it's always somewhere I've never been. And I don't know how to get back. <laughs> so my whole thing is like, like, I need to be able to leave. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm always like, I can't ever have that experience when people are like, Oh, I was so drunk. I'm like, I don't, nah, that's never gonna happen. Yeah, no, I, too many times, too many times. I've, I had woken up several times with no idea where I was or how to get back to where I needed to be, and just it's an adventure. We about to figure it out. I do the usual, you know. Do I got my keys? Do I got my phone? Do I have my wallet? All right, mm-hmm. I figure out what happened before that. When I get home, let's figure out this journey back to the house. You know, and then it's always mm-hmm. that I ain't gonna never do that again. Until, you know, later on that night or <laughs> next week or something. <laughs> Until it's time to do it again. Until it's time to do it again. Like, let's, let's roll. Yeah. But uh, that was another life. Nah, I appreciate you. Oh, uh, man, uh, it, what, else, what, what else do you have going on right now? Do you, uh, I heard you say you, you're thinking about uh, possibly re-entering the podcast life? I think about it every week in, in the way of, like, uh, I don't think I have what it takes right now to dedicate myself to a full show. Yeah. So I'm always open to guest spots. I'm always open to just uh, giving people commentary or open to debate about whatever is out there. Uh, I think about like creating segments just to give to people, like put this on your show. Uh, what's my man that used to do the join a 60 minute Andy Rooney. <laughs> yeah. He just used to have like this one segment where he just would just rant about stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I and I was that. like, yo, yeah. I was like, yeah, maybe I could do that. All right, so I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pitch this to you. Yeah. I'm gonna pitch this to you. I'm gonna pitch it on the show, and I'm keeping this. I'm not editing it out, regardless of what you say. But because I'm trying to get you to commit to something. But uh, <laughs> so I, I think the last time Dave Chappelle was on SNL and his monologue, I think he was talking about Herschel Walker, and he's like, Herschel Walker is observably stupid. And I was just like, man, that is yes. the dopest phrase. I've ever heard. So I went and registered the domain observablystupid.com, and that is my plan. Because mm. I've what is TWS has morphed into like what I want to be an internet safe space. Like I talk about yeah. like ratchet stuff and crazy stuff. Like we we just had a whole conversation about uh, being super high and shit like that. Like it's not just mm-hmm. super positivity, but I don't complain about things. I don't. I usually don't address stuff. That uh, I don't want to get any more light or publicity, and um, and that really narrows down my content. Like I struggle sometimes to think of shit to talk about mm-hmm. if I don't talk about those things. And then I'm a yeah. proponent of like you got to get the evil out. Like if it's in there yeah. and you don't ever express it, like it's coming out some sort of way. Like you you mm-hmm. want to be in control of, of how it gets expressed. So I'm thinking observably stupid is going to be my place to go. And just like, like, what is this? What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Like, what is wrong with y'all? What is wrong with this? You yeah. see this shit? This is, this is observably stupid. This is just, just, just dumb. We just had that conversation earlier. I'm not going to bring that one up, but because uh, yeah. I ain't trying to get you yeah. or any or myself or anybody else in trouble. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's situations like that where I just I need to get the evil out. So if you ever want to, you know, if you if you have any inclination of being a part of a you know a new project or just contributing in small ways i think yeah. i think uh i think that's a space for you like i think i think we could really sign, sign me up all right, all right. We, we'll talk more about it talk I'm more about it. but y'all heard him here yeah. first like, i y'all heard him say it <laughs> I, there are plenty of things that i have to say all right i feel like we could have brought back ppp loans <laughs> the war in ukraine is none of our business <laughs> so 
<laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry to those people. Thoughts and prayers. Hey P-P-P man, P loans yeah. round two should have set it up. You was popping in the Philippines. I had a little movement in Ukraine for a minute, so I got how I many? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm rolling uh, fair, with fair him. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm rolling with him. You was holding them down? I was holding them down. Okay. If <laughs> somebody was laughing to my show through all that shit, man, I appreciate you. I love you. Nah, you know, you are you a real on. one. You a real one. Yeah. But uh, right, with that being said, you know, I ain't going to hold you. I'm going to let us get up out of here. Uh, you know, people, please check out uh, please check out the show notes because I'm going to put the link for the um, Tell Someone You Love Them shirt in there so you can get yours and get, you know, random old ladies to give you pork rolls or, or tell you that they love you type shit like that that seems like a vibe <laughs> um you can also check hit up the what is tws.com merch store so what is tws.com forward slash store use coupon code hoodie season h-o-o-d-i-e-s-z-n all one word and that'll get you 20 percent off your entire order um it is it's almost valentine's day well i don't know when this is gonna drop but if it dropped before valentine's day um you can get your stay connected shirts you can get uh, your dope. I got the the men's dopeness and the ladies' dopeness. So y'all should get two dopeness shirts, maybe some hoodies, a stay connected joint for whatever situation y'all got. So you stay connected. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna set up a whole like Valentine's Day bundle or something. I don't know. We're gonna do something. But mm. Buy some merch is basically what I'm trying to say. Like, Long winded, but that's what I'm getting at. Um, but with that, you know, with that being said. Uh, if you like what you heard here today, please leave a like or a review. Um, even if you didn't, you know, tell me why you didn't. I appreciate that as well. Um, share it with a friend. You know, don't don't be a gatekeeper. You know, if this if this is a dope show, you know, you can spread the word. Like, even if I get big, I still remember you. Um, but until we speak again, y'all be safe, be easy, be the light. Jay, I appreciate you. Uh, please, everybody, tell someone you love them and know this. If you know nothing else, I love you. Holla. Last call for alcohol. <laughs> yeah. If this is it, like if, if this is the last joint, if this is the last rah. It's the last call for alcohol, baby. I gotta say whether you knew it or not. It's pretty much at the finest, the finest bar establishment, the finest spirits and libations y'all could have had, baby. You might realize it now, you might have realized it back then. You might realize it later. Love. <laughs>